Welcome back to uh, Python tutorial 3 of the course time uh, dependent quantum chemistry. Uh, so far we have presented um, how to, uh, what is the basic theory behind this uh, uh, construction of the K grid and uh, this is done based on discrete Fourier transform. We are not getting into the details of those theories, we are just using the final solutions and um, moving forward for the numerical implementation. So, what we have seen here is that a 50 algorithm, whenever I use this a 50 algorithm for the construction of the K grid, um, when we will be constructing the K grid, uh, there is a particular restrictions based on which the K grid will be constructed. Delta K delta X has to be 2 pi by N. And with this restriction, this FFT algorithm will give me a frequency component, a set of frequency components, a list of frequency components. Um, and this list of frequency components are nothing but 1 by n delta x multiplied by this 0, 1, 2, these numbers. And we see that the number contains 0 positive values and negative values, all these values are, uh, are there. We will take examples and it will clarify more. Once we get this frequency components, we will be able to get this k grid points by multiplying by 2 pi. And the basic idea is that then we get this k grid points. Um, we can convert this x grid points to this k grid points following this procedure. So, what we have understood so far is that the A50 algorithm. Um, a 50 algorithm, fast Fourier transform algorithm through its implementation of this discrete Fourier transform uh, theorem converts a finite sequence of equally spaced samples of real space domain So, often this x position grid or position space is called the real space and the momentum space is called reciprocal space. So, these are the common terminologies which we use in the Fourier uh, transform um, problem. So, what you are seeing is that this FFT algorithm is going to convert the equally spaced samples of real space domain. Um, into a same length which means number of elements should be the same length sequence of equally spaced samples of Fourier domain. So, number of elements would be the same. And what we have seen the first element in the list in the k grid point list, what we see the first element is going to be always 0, which means what does it mean? It means that if it is 0 spatial frequency, so 0 which means it is related to the spatial frequency, spatial frequency 0 which means that I do not have at all any oscillation. Okay. Uh, so, so it is more like a DC component that is why 0 oscillation. Second element we have seen it is going to be 1 related to 1. So, I am writing just special frequency components related to 1. So, I, I should not see uh, this one is a frequency components. So, this is F0, this is F1. What we F1 we see that it is a what this 1 means 
So, this one how we are getting this I will just show you this is the frequency component 0, 1, 2 like this way it is moving on. So, what does it mean by those numbers those frequency components is that the first frequency component we are sampling is the DC component which is 0. Then second frequency component which are sampling is frequency 1. So, I have only one single frequency one single oscillation in the entire X space this is X space this is again X space in the second one we have seen that it is going to be F2 F2 equals 2. So, I have two complete oscillations and so on that is the way it is moving forward. So, uh, this is the meaning of individual frequency components which we are getting in, in the when we are constructing the X uh, K grid. We will take an example and this example will clarify many of our uh, doubts and it will clarify the procedure further. So, as I mentioned before uh, the, the, to, to construct the reciprocal space or Fourier, uh, Fourier space we need to start with the X grid. So, let us say I have an X grid first which starts with the 0 this is just an example and ends at 9. So, it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, this is this is the grid 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I, I consider 9 up to 9 because then I have 10 elements. So, the window length is 10. So, n equals now 10 for this problem and n equals 10 it means that it is the even number. So, I have shown that for even number uh, this f would be different for odd number f would be different. So, if it is even number and then delta x what we get is, um, is 1 in this x space. So, these are the characteristic of the x space x grid. First we have to do is that in this entire procedure first we have to do is that um, this FFT algorithm will give me this frequency components and this frequency components is going to be for even for even number. So, that is why I will be able to write down as 1 by n is known now n is known delta x is known I will write down this way and then f components would be 0, 1, 2 like this and then n might n by 2 n by 2 minus 1 then is going to be n minus n by 2 then minus n by 2 plus 1 up to minus 1 that is the way you get. So, we know that n, n equals 10. So, it is going to be 10 by 2 this is going to be 10 this is going to be 10 and n is here 10 and delta x is going to be 1. So, for the given problem I have this situation where it is going to be then 0 0.1 multiplied by 0, 1, 2, 3. Now, this part is going to be 5 minus 1 which is 4 that is all. Then I have these negative values minus 5 then minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1 up to minus 1 we have to go minus 1. So, these are the uh, frequency components we get after the um, FFT fast Fourier transform. What we see here is that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Again I have this 10 window, the window remains to be the same. Here also I had 10 um, uh, grid points in the X space. Now, I have frequency components also X uh, 10 X space. So, finally, what I get is that I get 0 then this is the list what I get frequency component 0 0.1 then 0 0.2 then 0 0.3 then 0 0.4 then 
minus 0 0.5, then minus 0 0.4, then minus 0 0.3, then minus 0 0.2, then minus 0 0.1. This is what we get. So, once we get this xi that is the special frequency components, once we get that then k grid points can be very easily obtained, same k grid points will be able to obtain this is the by multiplying by 2 pi which means that 2 pi multiplied by this 0 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4 minus 0.5 minus 0.4 minus 0.3 minus 0.2 minus 0.1. So, if you multiply all and um, we get 0 and pi we have to consider the pi value 2 pi is going to be 2 point 2 pi is going to be 6.286. So, if I multiply approximately so, if we multiply then we get this 0 0.6286, then 1.2571 and one can try this final one is going to be minus 0 0.6286. So, this is what we get and we will see the implementation Python implementation. Um, and we will confirm that this is the list what we create. So, we will go back uh, to the uh, laptop first. Um, we will try to write down the program. First, we will um, import the required uh, libraries, importing the required libraries from I will save it, I will save in the correct directory as ft.py. Dot .py extension is to be given for the python programming. So, from scipy import a range. So, that we need to first import. Then we are now creating the x grid. We know that how to create that x minimum is going to be 0, x maximum is now going to be 10 and dx is going to be 1. So, then x equals I can write down a range I have to use this x minimum a range functionality does not include the stop which is x max point in the sequence and that is why we are stopping at 10. If we are stopping at 10 with an interval I will print it so that I can I know what I am doing. So, if I run the program what I get is that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That is the grid points. I come back to the uh, slide now. So, I have this x grid points which is presented 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and this part is now representing the x grid with the help of importing a range functionality from scipy. This is we are pretty clear to uh, th this part is clear to us and the grid window we call it grid window is number of elements we have in the grid points. We have 10 uh, 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 grid points in the x grid. So, once we have done that uh, first thing we will do is that we have to create this frequency, frequency components, xi frequency components and one can create the xi frequency components with the help of this FFT FREQ functionality. FFT FREQ functionality requires two inputs. The first input is that what would be the grid window and second input it requires is that what was the delta x. It requires delta x information because it will 
automatically take care of the entire algorithm for us to maintain this delta k delta x equals 2 pi by n restriction in the Fourier transform of the grid. So, it will take care for us, we do not need to worry about anything, we have to use this FFT FREQ. So, if we so, so, so for FFT FREQ, I need two inputs, the first input is the what is the window size that we can get it uh, we buy the by selecting this n equals length of x. So, this L L E n functionality gives me the length of a of an array, length of an array. Previously, we have also used this uh, um, functionality before. This is Python's built in functionality and I have to give the name of the array, that array name. Uh, here array name is a x, this is the array. So, I have to put x here. So, immediately it will give me how many elements I have and that is going to be 10, we know that we have 10 elements in this x grid. And another input it requires, the second input is going to be dx, what is the uh, difference between the, uh, the spacing between the adjacent uh, x grid points. So, these are the two information I need. Once I get that, then xi will be immediately created and the xi will be created and we can print it and we can check what is going on. So, so this FFT FRQ, FREQ, this functionality is not available with Python, it has, it is available with scipy dot FFT pack sub module of the scipy um, uh, uh, library. So, first, so we will go back to the laptop, I have to, uh, in order to use this um, uh, uh, FFT FREQ, I need to use this scipy FFT pack. So, I will import the required uh, functionality from scipy dot FFT pack import uh, uh, FFT FREQ. So, I am going to import this one. The moment I import it, I will be able to now create the K grid. So, I will create creating the k grid. When I am creating the k grid, the first information, first input I need is the, so I will be able to create, create the k grid as I name the, um, this entire array, the k grid array as, uh, as i, which is going to be now FFT FREQ within bracket n comma dx, dx is already given here, dx is going to be 1. So, we know that dx, but n is not given, n is the length of the x grid. That information I have to, because the same length will be maintained. This is, this is the only two inputs I need to create the, um, the frequency components, xi frequency components of the um, uh, associated with the k grid and then I can print it to check what I am um, uh, calculating here. I can print and then I can run the program. What I see is that the frequency components are following 0, plus 1, uh, sorry, uh, point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4, then minus point 0.5, minus point 0.4, minus point 0.3 minus 0.2 and minus 0.1. That is exactly, we will go back to the slide now, that is exactly what we have calculated here. The frequency component xi is given by 0 plus 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 like this. And once we know the xi, then one can calculate the uh, k uh, points very easily and we will show how to calculate the uh, k points. So, uh, this is this is your um, x uh, um, uh, x uh, this is this is the x grid this is the x grid we have then we have xi components we have and note that the same number of the window length is the same and now we have to find out the k and k is nothing but 2 pi into xi so what we need to do is that um, um, we all we have to do is that um, uh, 
uh, we have to now just multiply this uh, this this entire xi array by 2 pi then we get this k values and that is exactly what we are going to do right now. Um, we are going to now move to the uh, laptop and in the in the program. So, we will uh, write down this k is going to be now well let us keep this xi then we will just write down k equals 2 multiplied by pi, but remember pi is not available with python directly not an inbuilt uh, functionality uh, or uh, inbuilt um, uh, mathematical function uh, that needs to be imported from scipy. Built in uh, arithmetic computation which can be done with python are just uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and exponentiation. But uh, remaining part cos, trigonometric, pi, they, 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 those um, um, mathematical functions needs to be imported from scipy or numpy. Numpy we are not at all using here, we are, we are consistently using only scipy. So, k equals 2 pi multiplied by this xi. and we can also print k. So, finally, what we get is um, we see that um, the first will go back to uh, the uh, we, 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 we have this k value the first k value is 0, second k value is 0.62. So, the k grid has been prepared. So, this is the k grid we have prepared and this was the x grid. So, x grid and k grid has a correspondence. What is the correspondence we have? This is x grid let us say. So, it is starting from 0 and then the difference is 1 in the k x grid. This is, this is the x grid, but if we look at the k grid it is it is starting from 0 then it has positive values and negative values and the difference so this is the this is the k grid and the difference uh, the spacing is delta k so this is delta x equals 1 and this is delta k equals 0 0.62832 approximately so if, if we see that the a50 algorithm this a50 frequency algorithm coming from a50 pack of scipy it is actually taking care of this requirement delta k delta x is going to be 2 pi by n and that's exactly what we get if we multiply this and 1 we get 2 pi by n n equals we know it is going to be 10 so it is it is taking care of that conversion the requirement for the conversion so, this is what we have to do, it is very simple, uh, we, we can con construct the reciprocal grid with the help of this, uh, uh, this, uh, this script. We will take another example, the example for the odd uh, number of uh, odd window uh, where we have odd number of elements odd number of elements we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, we have 11 number of elements now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, starting from so this is your x grid now 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So, total number is 11 it is odd because it is odd then this f function has slightly different f is going to be now a list for the odd number of n and that list is given by n delta x now it is going to be 0 1 2 then n minus 1 by 2 then minus n minus 1 by 2 
then minus n minus 1 by 2 plus 1 continue up to minus 1. So, we know that n is now 11 multiplied by delta x is still 1. So, we have 1, then I have this n value is going to be now 11, this n value is 11, this n value is 11. So, what I have is 0, 1, 2, 3, this part is going to be 5, so 4, then 5, then I have minus 5, then I have minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1. We have 11 number of frequency components and uh, I have to now uh, multiply this 1 by 11 is going to be um, approximately 0 0.091. So, I have to multiply. So, in the end this frequency component xi we get 0 then 0 0.091 then 0 0.182, then 0 0.273 like this and it will end at minus 0 0.091. <coughs> we have both 0 uh, and positive and negative frequency components. So, once we get this i, we will be able to get the k grid points by just multiplying this the list of xi frequency components which is 0 0.091, 0 0.182, then so on up to 0 0.091. And if we multiply, finally what we get 2 pi equals 6.286, 6.286, that is why we get a list of k grid points or an array of k grid point 0, 0.572. Note that in Python programming when Python prints its array, it does not show the comma. We are showing the comma just to separate visual clarity, but when Python is printing as I can show you, Python has printed like this, it does not have any comma, it has only a space between two numbers. This is the convention Python follows. But when we are presenting it for visual clarity, we are giving this comma. So, do not get confused by how Python is printing and how we are writing here. This is just for simplified part we are following. So, this is second part is going to 1.144 like this and it is going up to minus 0.572. So, plus 0 0.572, minus 0 0.572 both are present. So, this is the x grid points we will go over now and this time we will be able to modify, we will change to laptop and we will be able to modify the program accordingly. So, now we have x max is going to be now 11 and we know that arrange functionality does not include uh, in the sequence this maximum or the stop point. So, if we use x max equals 11, it will stop at 10 and that is exactly what we want. And um, then we will be creating the x grid points and remaining part is remaining uh, is the same. So, we will just run the program. If we run the program, we see that we have created 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, this is the x grid point we have created. Second one, second list representing 0, then 0 0.09, then 0 0.18, that is the list of the xi, the possible frequency components. Once we get the possible frequency components, then we get the k grid points as 0 0.57, 1.14. So, we will go back to the slide right now. And we see that we have been able to, so this is your x grid point where it is starting from 0, then this is 1 and so on. And this is your k grid where 
it is starting at 0 then 0.57119 approximately and it has also negative of that value also the same value. So, we see again the delta k is given by 0.57119 and here delta x is given by 1. So, again we have this uh, delta k delta x equals 2 pi by n fulfilled and this is taken care by this FFT FREQ um, um, this this entire um, uh, functionality of psi pi dot FFT pack sub module. So, what we see is that um, uh, the, the, the fast Fourier transform um, this uh, this fast Fourier transform pack this psi pi dot FFT pack sub module one can use this sub module to convert the x space to k grid so, we are we are just simply converting the x grid to k grid, we have not converted the function yet, function has not been converted, it is just the grid point has been converted, then function will be represented on those grid points uh, with the help of um, a certain procedure. So, what we have seen is that um, uh, this, uh, this, um, this FFT FREQ uh, functionality of psi pi f50 pack can actually convert x grid to k grid and is taking care all the necessary uh, requirement imposed by uh, discrete Fourier transform DFT discrete Fourier transform has certain requirement and is fulfilling the requirement is doing the job in the background for me for us and is giving me the uh, x grid points. So, this is the final equation to, to get the x grid uh, k grid points and as an input what I need it, an input, input is taken from the nature of the k grid point. The first nature is the n which is the window length and dx is the spacing in the x grid point. So, once we know this two uh, inputs, we will be able to construct the k grid points by with the help of this simple functionality FFT FREQ functionality. We will move on and uh, uh, as I have uh, previously uh, pointed out that there are two steps in the Fourier transform. First step is that we have uh, we have to get the uh, k grid, we have to construct the k grid and then we have to convert the function. So, this, this program shows that this is an example where we are going to now transform, we are transform a cosine function, a cosine function in the x axis, if the cosine function if I take in the on the x grid it should, it should have this oscillation and question is in the k grid how it should look like, that is the uh, thing we are going to uh, take a look at. So, the first thing is that create the x grid, this is what we have done creating the x grid. Then we have to create the k grid, this is the k grid, we know that we are now familiar with this. Then we have to define the function in the x grid and that is the definition of the function we are giving. We know that in a mathematical function when you use an array we get back an array as a as a function values. So, y is again an array of the function values. So, this is we are defining the um, uh, cosine function in the position space grid. Once we have defined the uh, function in the position space grid, then the Fourier transforming the cosine function is very simple. We have to just use FFT of y. So, FFT functionality, this is the function in the x grid, 
the function on the x grid. So, on the x grid the function I have defined here the name of the function is y that is why we are giving f of t y that is all. So, this is discretized function and this f of t uh, functionality of the same package psi pi dot f of t pack can actually convert give me the discretized function in the uh, in the k domain. So, that is going to be I am giving the name as uh, y uh, y k. So, we will we will take a look at it one more point which we would like to mention here is that when you do this f of t the fast Fourier transform uh, fast Fourier transform when you are doing it always there is an complex part. So, we are multiplying. So, so basic idea is that if we look at the integration part although this is based on discrete Fourier transform we are not following this integration part, but integration is the general form. We have a function in the position space domain we are multiplying by minus i k x some complex function will be multiplied always to get the Fourier transform this is going to be phi k t. So, because it is multiplied by a complex function always this y k after the Fourier transforming uh, uh, space domain function to uh, position uh, momentum domain function this function will be always a complex function. And because it is a complex function which means that it will have always this form a plus i b i is minus square root of minus 1. So, because it is a complex function we will try to plot taking its absolute value of the function which means it will be plotting a square plus b square square root of a square plus b square. So, this part we have to remember after Fourier transforming a function from position domain to the uh, momentum domain always we will get a complex uh, function and that complex function either we can plot the real and complex part separately or to get an idea what kind of functions I have in the k domain now it is going to be I can use the absolute value. Absolute value is the absolute magnitude which we can get from abs within bracket the function name and that is available in the python's built in uh, library. So, we, we, we one can use it very quickly. So, we will go back uh, to laptop right now and we will try to implement this what we have learned psi pack from psi pack psi, uh, psi pi dot f of t pack will import f of t freq for the k grid construction and also f of t functionality for converting the function. So, these are the two functions will be uh, importing. Now, here in the psi pi we need another functionality uh, sorry uh, uh, mathematical function which is cos function because cos function is also not available with the uh, in the python's built in library. We have to import it from psi pi. So, we are importing it because we have to define the uh, cos function. So, once we have now this x grid definition remains to be the same here we will just change uh, the values from and minus 100 to plus 100. It is just a, a convenience depending on what functions we are going to represent uh, we, we can we can create this x grid. Then we, we are going to define uh, define define the cosine function on the x grid we are first defining it definition is very simple y equals cos x the moment we take and then we will multiply 20 by 20 why I will I'll, I'll explain cos 20 x 20 multiplied by x. So, x is an array which is the x grid. So, y is going to be an again an array and our next step is to create the k grid. So, k grid has been created. I will 
Now we do not need xi, always we need to do not need to show xi, we can directly use k equals 2 pi xi which is f of t f r e q. So, we have created the k grid, now we will do one thing, we will just Fourier transform the wave function, Fourier transform the cosine function and the way we are going to Fourier transform is, is very simple, we are going to give, give the name f y k equals just f of t within bracket the discretized function in the express that is y and that is all this will do the job. Next what we will do instead of printing we will just take a look at the, the, uh, the, the what we, we are getting. So, first we will plot this x function and for plotting we have to import again because the plot functionality come does not come directly from python inbuilt um, um, library, we have to uh, import it from matplotlibrary.pyplot uh, sub module, this is we are now familiar with matplotlibrary.pyplot, I have to import plot functionality, then show functionality and then I will make use of x limit functionality, I will just control the limit of that x. So, first we will plot this x versus y, we will see what is going on, we will run the program and we will see what x versus y is giving me. Oh, we have to we have to always whenever we are plotting we have to show the plot otherwise it will not show anything. So, now I have this x versus y plot um, and dx also we have to change here, dx we are going to use uh, 0 .00, 0 0.001 okay. We will change it because then it will be otherwise you will see there is a slight change in the absolute amplitude. Uh, and that is because the sampling problem. So, if you reduce the, the spacing in the x grid, it will uh, give you the values. So, what we see is almost nothing, we have to control the x limit, um, x limit equals x limit, we place x limit to be minus 5 to plus 5. If we, if we, if we set the x limit, very small region we are trying to look at, then we see that uh, the cosine function has been plotted. We can also change the x limit from 0 to let us say uh, 2, that will be much uh, clearly shown. Then we see that uh, the cosine function has been plotted on the x grid and we have the x grid. This function, so once we have confirmed, this part I can now delete from here we do not need it and we can check after the Fourier transform what we are getting. So, now x is not x here, it has to be now k, I am going to plot k versus y k, this is what I am going to plot right now and x limit we will set to be minus 30, this is just for our convenience. So, conveniently one can select this x limits. So, if we do that, then what we see here, uh, oh, we cannot plot this x k because x k has both real and uh, the uh, complex part. So, as we have mentioned, it is going to be absolute value of y k we are going to plot. So, if we plot the absolute value of y k, what we see here is that there are two peaks we see in the at the 20 position. So, I will go back to the slide right now and uh, we will uh, clarify some of the uh, points here. We will stop here and we will continue this session in the next class.